AMD releases new preview driver for God of War Ragnarok and Frostpunk 2. Gigabyte X870 pricing has been leaked and it looks pretty good. AMD to design PlayStation 6 chip outbidding Intel and Broadcom. And lastly, the new Agasa 12.02 update reduces the AMD Ryzen 9000 intercore latency. Okay, so firstly, we have the AMD software Adrenaline 24.20.11.01. That's a big name there. Has been released, which is a preview driver, of course. And this particular driver supports three games, basically two newer titles, or I should say one newer title, which is a Frostpunk 2. God of War Ragnarok is coming to PC, even though it's an older title, in PC this is completely new, so of course, this is huge for PC gaming, God of War Ragnarok is finally coming, with Frostpunk 2 is also another demanding game, but also pretty fun to play. And of course the update, which is the Sims 4 DirectX 11 update has been introduced. We also have the expanded AMD Radeon Boost support, which is gonna be for Final Fantasy 16. They've also introduced the expanded hype tune support, which basically allows HyperRx to enable in game, which is right here, as you can see, in game technologies like AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution and AMD Anti Lag 2. So we already know what HyperRx is basically enables the AMD FSR and the Anti Lag 2 at the same time, which is an which has been added with the HyperTune support. And of course, these are the three games that will be supporting this tech with the HyperTune, which is the Black Mid Wukong Creatures of Ava and God of War Ragnarok. And for automating Anti Lag 2 support, we have the Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. So these are the basic updates we're looking at and some fixes which we can go through of course but not really important although it is important for games so not bad so yeah frostpunk 2 is available for pre-purchase i don't think it's uh you can really play the game right now i could be wrong but I, i'm i'm guessing this is for pre-purchase i've seen some streamers and youtubers i guess playing the game well in live streaming it but i don't know maybe that was a preview copy of it so i guess that should be the case but yeah this particular game the frostpunk 1 was a success so frostpunk 2 should be also another success which is a survival city builder game of course so you might want to play this game this is phenomenally good definitely so you want to look into it and this time around they have introduced more and if you are a frostpunk frostpunk fan you would be delighted to play this game definitely and i guess i don't really have to talk about god of War ragnarok however they're giving some price cut here which is kind of nice from $6.99 which is $70 of course to $39.89 which is nice like this is a substantial savings that you can have which will be ending on 9 26 2024 so you should grab it we, we literally have a week left so you don't want to miss this so yeah pretty cool stuff from AMD and um, of course Frostpunk 2 and God of War Ragnarok next up we have more information for the X870 motherboards and this time Gigabyte has well unveiled a lot of their motherboards but the pricing has been leaked so, and so momomo underscore us was was able to well basically leak this information or got this information so let's look into it so of course we are looking at the gigabyte x 870i Aorus pro i've already covered this particular pricing information for gigabyte some of the gigabyte boards not all of them like for example the ice motherboard and look at this the pricing is somewhere close to the leaked information that was leaked before but it's not quite that so clearly this is not a bad pricing 299 for the x 870 i Aorus Pro Ice Motherboard. We're looking at X870 E Aorus Pro Ice Motherboard, which is 359 a little bit premium, I think. Like, yeah, it's kind of it is kind of expected because you know it's a full ATX motherboard, so it doesn't surprise me. And also it's an X870E board, so I think that is kind of justified. Similarly, for the black version of it, we have the Aorus Master going five hundred dollars, which is also like too expensive in my opinion. But I I get I guess that that really applies for overclocking stuff, so I guess that that is kind of fair in terms of pricing but still four ninety nine is like too expensive in my opinion we also have the x 870 e Aorus elite wi-fi 7 which is 319 not bad and you know of course the most expensive one which is the a extreme ai top motherboard which is 799 the naming itself says ai top so yeah 799 is a crazy pricing there definitely crazy pricing we also have some cheaper boards which is the gaming x version of it which is x870 gaming x wi-fi 7 which is coming at 249 and that is a pretty decent pricing in my opinion that is for sure but the cheapest var variant we're looking at which is the gaming plus which is going to be coming at 219 basically 220 dollars so that is probably the cheapest variant if you're focusing on games 
and some little bit of productivity or like even higher productivity workload this this board should be good right 219.99 although the vrms may be a bit worse still it is in the range of affordability so i'm not really complaining there we also have the aurus elite wi-fi ice so this one is a little bit cheaper which is 289 as you can see and of course we have the eagle also cheaper 229 so that's not bad and of course the x870 aurus elite which is also 289 so yeah in general these pricing are looking pretty good especially these motherboards the gaming x plus and then the aurus elite wi-fi 7 we also have the you know eagle so these ones are cheaper not sure how well the vrm is gonna be but then again it's at least we have the options right but i wonder who's gonna buy the ai top motherboard that is crazy pricing there 7.99 is way too much next up we have some interesting information coming from Reuters, and basically they're reporting that how intel lost the sony playstation business so basically what they're talking about is that intel lost the bidding similarly broadcom has lost a bidding to amd and basically amd will be continuing their amd based playstation 6 chip so the reports here right here as you can see intel lost a contract to design and fabricate sony's playstation 6 chip in 2022 so there was a bidding in 2022 and they lost it basically the intel to none other than of course amd of course so amd is going to be carrying their playstation 5 success with playstation playstation 6 so it's kind of expected because the main reason they won this basically the backwards compatibility stuff as you can see according to Reuters, since amd makes chip in the ps5 and the ps5 pro maintaining backward compatibility in a possible move was part of months of discussion in 2022 so the reason amd was able to deliver or even get the bidding for playstation 6 chip is because of this particular factor here which is the ps5 and ps5 pro backwards compatibility which is also pretty nice because you know now you can play a lot of older titles on ps5 and ps5 pro so that's that's a very much a good sign and a good practice for consoles and i guess a amd was able to deliver that with their hardware and now you know that is mainly because they're they all have all, they've also won the bidding for the playstation 6 chip making so that's pretty good not sure if amd will be able to deliver like the playstation 5 or playstation 5 pro even though playstation 5 pro is way too expensive which is 700 dollars is to me it's kind of more expensive but even then people will be buying the console anyway so regardless of what playstation pricing is people will buy anyway those who are hardcore console gamers so that doesn't change that fact but for playstation 6 we will be seeing amd again and next up we have some good news for the 9000 series of cpu users from amd of course and you know we had a story about you know amd will be fixing their zen 5 c2c latency issue where the latency was hitting 175 180 i think and there was a billy billy video where they told the viewers of course that they will be fixing the zen 5 c2c latency issue well now we have fix here from a geyser 12.02 driver of course like you see, as you can see this is the newer Agasa 12.02 latency chart we are looking at and as you can see it says 76 all around 76 74 75 so on the on average it's 75 nanoseconds of latency we're looking at previously if you look closely here this is the uh, overclock.net forum here and as you can see it says the Agasa 12.0.1a this particular bios let me just zoom into it real quick and as you can see it says 184 185 193 171 so the latency from c to c chiplet of course had some serious issue right here which is 185 nanoseconds on average which is too high considering you know it's nanoseconds still it doesn't feel like too high but you know it's, it's still way too much when it comes to computation so of course this is going to be impactful and it did impact the performance for ryzen 9000 not sure if this will make any difference which is the 75 average nanoseconds we're looking at now will it make a huge difference difference i have no idea maybe a new cpu benchmark is required now as there is a new driver for a geisa 12.02 so we got we got to see that if this has improved anything but definitely from previous 
latency this is substantially better clearly the 75 nanoseconds now it's just better still i don't know why it's still like you know in a darker or lighter yolo format where this is like green can it be even better than this no idea but I i'm thinking they this is the actual fix which is the which is gonna be making it stable 75 nanoseconds average so if that is the case not bad clearly and if that improves the performance for ryzen 9000 then this is great definitely so will the 9000 series improve with the 75 nanosecond ccd latency we don't know for sure benchmark is required so i guess we will be waiting to see that so yeah don't forget to like share and subscribe to this channel and of course let's see if this particular update fixes anything and i'll be updating you if it does